Hello and welcome back to another installment of your Batco Lab video. In this video will take a look at a quick way to measure sugar concentration via refractive index. Measuring the refractive index of a liquid is a quick way to evaluate some of its physical and chemical properties such as purity or concentration. It is so quick, in fact, that it is often used by the sugar industry to measure the mass fraction of sugar dissolved in water to evaluate the sugar content along their process. Refractive index is a fairly simple physical phenomena defined as the ratio of the speed of light in a vacuum to the speed of light in the medium of interest. Measuring the refractive index involves utilizing Snell's law, which relates the angle of incidence to the angle of refraction and the speed of light in two different mediums, or the index of refraction of these two materials. As I mentioned before, often the principle of index of refraction measurement is used to determine the sugar content for quality control in sugar production facilities. The method is so well established that oftentimes a flow through unit is placed directly in line of production so that the facility can make continuous measurements. Additionally, there are tables to relate the refractive index measured to the traditional standard of sugar concentration known as the BRICS scale. The BRICS scale is defined such that 1 degree BRICS is 1 gram of sucrose in 100 grams of solution and thus represents the percentage by weight. The BRICS scale is really only truly applicable to solutions in which the only dissolved solid is pure sucrose, but it can give an estimate for solutions in which there are small amounts of other dissolved solids as well. Traditionally, specific gravity is used and is measured using either a hydrometer or a pycnometer. These are less than ideal in many applications. More recently, these two are often replaced with a vibrating U-tube density meter, but these two have some shortcomings. Given that there is a known relationship between the sugar content and the refractive index, and that the refractive index of sugar solution is quick and easy to measure, the refractometer has the edge over standard practices. To demonstrate this, we produced three different samples of sugar solution with known masses of both sugar and distilled water, so that we can compare a known brick scale measure to the refractive index. We have prepared samples of approximately 4.8 degrees, 13 degrees, and 23.1 degrees bricks. To measure the index of refraction in our NAT lab, we use an automatic refractometer with temperature control capabilities. It measures the refractive index by focusing a single well-known 589.3 nanometer wavelength light onto a prism surface, thus creating a wide range of incident angles onto the interface between the prism and our sample. At that interface, depending on the incident angle, light will either partially transmit into the sample and be partially reflected, or reflect off the interfa interface completely with no transmission in the sample at all. This is what is known as the critical angle and signifies total internal reflection at this angle as well as larger angles. The instrument then measures the light reflected from the interface and relates this to the initial intensity, determining the critical angle of total internal reflection which is then used to calculate the refractive index. This whole process happens within a matter of minutes to determine the index of refraction of the material at a chosen controlled temperature with even very small sample volumes. This yields extremely accurate and extremely quick results. Here we see the readout from the refractometer on one of our sugar samples. We can see that it has an index of refraction of 1.37103 after three measurements. We repeated the measurements on the two remaining samples and found values to be 1.35372 and 1.34043. The table values for samples with these bricks values are 1.33997 for 4.8 degrees bricks, 1.35250 for 13 degrees bricks, and 1.36907 for 23.1 degrees bricks. By the percent error between the two, we can see that the values produced in our refractometer are close to the table values at 20 degrees C. So we're happy with both the results from our refractometer and also the results listed in the table. It should be noted that it is likely that the error in the index of refraction is due more to the error in the measurement of the sample prior to the mixture, that is, the mass of the sugar and the mass of the water used to produce the mixture, as opposed to error in the measurement of the index of refraction by the instrument. The refractometer can also be set to give us the value of the degrees bricks directly. To demonstrate this, we prepared an unknown sample of sugar and distilled water and performed a test. We can see here on the readout that the index of refraction is 1.35466. The instrument also tells us the solution is 14.37 degrees bricks. Cross-referencing with the table, we see that the measured index of refraction corresponds to a BRICS measurement between 14.3 and 14.4, consistent with our results. 
So not only can we determine the index of refraction of a given substance, but we can directly find the sugar content in a common measurement scale of a solution with an unknown concentration. Well, that's all for this installment of Ibat Go Lab TV. We hope you enjoyed and will visit us again. Keep an eye out for more videos covering diverse topics from our lab. If you have any questions about either the methods or the instrument you saw here today, please don't hesitate to give us a call or shoot us an email. Our contact info can be found on our website. And as always, if you're interested in nanomechanical and surface characterization lab services or consultation, please give us a call. We'd love to hear from you.